Hello everyone, I'm back again with another SFM tutorial to help you with composition in SFM. To start off the tutorial, I'll be using a scene build which I've already uh, made and will be using as my newly created scene. Now, to start off, everything in I will be using in this video will be in the description below. So, now I'll give you some techniques to help you with learning some tactics on how to improve your composition. The first rule, which is very important and which is considered the golden rule, is the rule of thirds. This rule is a guide and is done by cutting your camera into a 3x3 and positioning your focus character on either the second or third intersectional vertical lines. I'll now show you how to get the rule of thirds into SFM. So, first of all, what you need to do is uh, go to this uh, page It's uh, by Argo Damon. Uh, it's the rule of thirds overlay which will give you your rule of thirds in SFM. So, you just need to download the zip folder. Like so. Okay, so once we've downloaded it, I'm just going to open it. Okay. Now it gives us our materials folder. So, like we usually do with any model for a Source Filmmaker, we'll just go into our local disk. So, just this PC, local disk. Program Files, go all the way down to Steam, Steam Maps, Common, Source Filmmaker, Game, User Mod, and then we'll just drag that in. Just drag it in right there. I won't do it because I've already have uh, the rule of thirds. Now, to get the rule of thirds into SFM, the way we do it is by going into the uh, clip editor right here. Down here, you can see this is the scene I've created. I just go down. You can see with overlay here, in this little section right here, I'm just going to right click and add clip to track. And then I'm going to click material overlay. Right now, you can see there's this little bar right, right here. I'm just going to get this and I'm just going to drag it all the way across just to cover my whole entire clip. Right, now I have it. So I'm going to right click on this uh, the new clip that we just added. Going to go and show an element viewer. Now you can see there's material right here. Three dots. Well, I'm going to click on that and I'm going to type in rule and it should come up. There's two of them but just do the first one. Click that. And you can see, here it is. You can toggle the uh, to turn it off and on, where it has the effects, where you just click the plus button. So you can see, we have now have the rule of thirds in SFM. So the way we position it, and I'll show you just by creating a new camera. So we're going to create a new camera. And then we're going to position... Our, our main focus or character on one of our rule of third lines. The reason why the rule of thirds is such a uh, great tool is because it gives um. Because your eyes usually go into this direction right here. They usually go into here. They don't usually go in the middle or go into like the left and right sides. They usually focus on this point and it's generally aesthetically pleasing for your eyes to like look in this direction. So if you turn it off, you can see it looks pretty good. But sometimes you can actually, if you're good at SFM, you can actually break this rule like I've done here. Because you can see mine's directly in the middle because I wanted to give it some line of symmetry in the middle. I want it to Twilight to be the main focus of my actual photo. So you can see it's it is breaking the rule, it's not on either of the uh, 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 intersections, but because this comes in with time with SFM, if when you, because I suggest you start using the rule of thirds always if you're a beginner or you're not confident with your composition in SFM, I highly suggest that you actually do use this rule uh, constantly, but after like a 
like a couple of like you know weeks of maybe doing this or maybe when you feel it's necessary that you don't need the rule anymore and you can just do it off by sight uh, that's when you should try to go a get a little bit more creative with your composition so my next tip is simplification so simplification because uh, simplification is making everything ex seem extremely simple so not trying to like make things extremely crazy and whatnot so like how, like how possibly like if I wanted to like add a dragon in the background I wouldn't really want that because that's not what really I'm going for I just want the focus to be on Twilight and ma making her just look like she's like exploring a cave and stuff like that because you can see it's a cave snowy cave it's just stormy outside yeah and I want everything just to be simple I don't want everything to be over the top like I don't want to have like a massive battle like in the background because one, it would take the focus off Twilight and people would be thinking, oh, what's the context with this? I just wanted to make it as simple as possible, which is how it always should be with uh, images like this. Like, and, and you should convey your message extremely easy with your composition. And uh, the way you can also uh, improve your uh, simplification is either removing parts of your scene which are necessary and adding things which might be uh, uh, essential. So with these like uh, with these mountains, I could have just had no mountains and just made it really uh, really foggy outside. But I wanted to create some sort of you know depth in real life to this, so I added mountains in the background and I added no lights to them and just uh, added lights uh, behind them just to create the look of well you can see them in the distance, but they're not really there. So with that, uh, you should always be looking to see if there's anything you can remove in scenes and just experiment with them and maybe add things like. Uh, you know, things that you might, like, look at examples online and stuff like that of uh, things that could be in your scene, because that's always a good indication of what is somewhat needed. Okay, and uh, another way that you can get rid of uh, clutter, as I like to call it, so, like, when your eyes are, like, moving all the time and not really focused on one direction, is you can always play around with lighting. So, bright lights will always direction your eyes to that very specific point. So if I find my lights, here they are. Uh, all right, I will. Okay. Okay, you can see this light here, which is coming from, which is meant to be generated by the uh, the fire. So if I was to brighten that up. You can see, because it's a different color, and it's a lot brighter than everything else, it's giving more emphasis on Twilight and the fire around it. So it's showing that so it's very hot, but also you can see that it's giving more... So you're going to immediately look at Twilight because she's the brightest. She's the brightest thing in the, in this uh, image right now. You can see the orange really helps that as well because it's a different color. It's mm, so you can see, like, if you were to turn away right now and then look at the image, you would probably see Twilight because, one, she's in the middle, and two... She's a lot brighter than everything else in this scene. So that's another way that you can help uh, help the simplification and a way that you can get your uh, audience to look at your character directly is by increasing the light. And this can work with nighttime scenes as well, just making your character just a little bit brighter than everything else is going on in this scene. So, just go back right here. Okay, so uh, my last rule with uh, composition in SFM is uh, working with aperture and uh, just turn this on and also aperture and also for uh, focal distance so when I we grab our camera that we just placed and we moved around to the rule thirds you can see that there's these options when we click on the camera you can see there's these options field of view focal distance aperture tone map scale bloom as SSAO bias uh, SSAO strength uh, radius and whatnot well the ones that we would really want to well uh, work on is focal distance and aperture. So if we get this focal distance and we just like, oh, we have to be in motion editor first. If we grab this focal distance and we just grab it and we want it, the focal distance between, like we want the focal distance to go in, like through our character's face, but not like quite through. We just want it to go like, just chop her face in half pretty much. And then if we just bring, what, well, no, okay. I'll just explain what focal distance is. It's uh where your character, um where, Wherever the focus distance is, because you can see there's a square here, massive, like a uh, pretty much like a inv like a a wall, uh, a purple wall with the opacity drop, pretty much. 
if we just bring this across, you can see that everything through that square, through that square right here, and everything behind her will be blurred out. Also, the stuff that's in front of her, like you can see there's this uh, uh, little bit uh, brick to the left, you can see it's like cutting through, yeah, that will be blurred out as well. It's it's only something that's going through. So you can see this, uh, that little fire cauldron thing, you can see it's going through, yeah, well that won't be blurred, you can see the part where it's actually cut through. And you can also see Twilight's face, yeah, that won't be cut through as well. And aperture is how much blur will actually, you know, occur. So if I just bring this up, you can see, and then when we just in camera 2 and just let it render. A little quick render. You can see everything else is just a bit blurred, but you can see the character is still in focus. And the way that we can also uh, in where I can show the immediate effect is just by bringing it fully and we can see the immediate changes to it. Yeah, so now you can see like what has actually happened. You can see that everything in the back is blurred. Uh, Twilight is somewhat uh, in focus. Also, the uh, little bit of the cauldron is in focus as well. And you can see that some of this as well has been um, blurred out as well. And everything else in the background has been blurred to shit. But um, the way, you because with Aperture, you don't always want to drag it to like the fullest extent. You only want a little bit of blur, especially if it's an animation. You don't want really want much blur whatsoever because you're going to have things moving all the time. And it won't really look nice. Thank you, Brad, for that point, actually. And, uh, yeah, so we just really just want to drop this down to, I guess, uh, past the P, I guess. It, it, you have to play around with this around with the setting. Like, you just don't want too much. You can always you can always have too little, and you can just edit it in Photoshop, just, like, use the blur tool. But, really, what I tend to do is I just tend to drag it halfway or just a little bit below halfway. And you can see that uh, this photo is has a good composition because it's in line with the rule of thirds. Uh, I'm using simplification, so it's not overly complicated in any way. I'm using lights to uh, direct where my uh, uh, character is and where my main focus is, and I'm also using the camera settings to try and uh, pretty much confirm where my main focus is by blurring out everything in the background and having Twilight as my main character in this uh, compositional shot. So, yeah, those were some techniques to help you with composition SFM. And I hope this uh, helped you. See you next time for another tutorial. Play, 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 play.